Okay, good morning. So, uh, we continue the lesson. There are two. I told you that there are three theorems in a triangle. One was the area theorem, we just learned that before. And then there are two more sine and cosine theorems that I will cover today. Uh, and now we come back to the, the part that I skipped. And then section 5.2 is also... Uh, has been dropped from this course, so that's good. So you don't need to learn section 5.2, which is related to uh, uh, an equation for certain. Okay, so let me remind you what was the area rule we had before. So if we have a triangle, ABC, yes, uh, we learned that, of course, there is. We, we knew from uh, uh, primary school even uh, studies that what is how we can find the area of a triangle, of a given triangle, by multiplying the base by height and then divided by two. Yes, but we also learned that in trigonometry we have a, another relation which somehow involves the measure of angles. So we learned that if S denotes the area of this triangle. You can write it as one half. So I told you that this length is usually denoted by little a, this length is by little c, and this is by b. So you can write b times c, one half of the product of two sides, but multiplied by the sine of the angle between those two sides. Yes. So in this case, it would be sine of a. Yep. But of course, we can take the other pairs, and I write one over two. This time I can write, for example, c times a, and then multiply by the sine of the angle between these two uh, sides, which in this case is b, and eventually I can write, if I want to, uh, a times b multiplied by sine of c. All of these rules are actually giving me the area of that triangle. Yes. Okay, so immediate consequence of this actually is a very nice theorem, which is called the sine theorem, yes? Uh, and in principle I should write the, the sine, yes. Okay, so what is the, uh, the sine theorem? Of course, the sine theorem in a triangle. It's a very nice relation, yes? If you have any kind of triangle, a, B, C, any arbitrary triangle, then the ratio of the length of a side to the sine of the opposite angle is constant. And it doesn't matter which one you choose. For example, if I choose A, and I divide it by the sine of the angle opposite to A, it becomes a number. That number is exactly equal if I take other sides. For example, if I take B and then divide it by sine of the opposite angle, which is B, and also equals to C divided by sine of C. This is called the sine theorem. It's a nice relation, yes? It means the ratio of any side that you take by the sine of this angle opposite to that side is constant, no matter which side you are taking, this is always true. And of course, some books write this the other way around. Some people write it sine A over A. That's completely equivalent, yes. So some, some books, or even you can use it in that way. Some people prefer to write the angles up and the sides down. So this would be sine B over B, the sine C. But of course, it is clear that if I know one of them, the other one is actually completely clear. By the way, that is not a very, a very strange rule. That is more or less the area rule. Yes, why is that? Because, for example, in the previous theorem, we learned that all of these are actually equal. And all of them are equal to the area of the triangle. So, for example, this one and that one are the same. Yes. So it means that 1 over 2 BC sine of A is equal to 1 over 2, for example, CA sine B. Yes? 
Why is that? Because this is the area, this is also the area of the same triangle, so these two numbers should match. And then immediately you realize I can divide or I can multiply everything by 2, then I get rid of this one half factor, and then there is a C here and a C there. I can divide by C and I can get rid of this C as well. Yes? Then what is left for me on the left hand side, I have B multiplied by sine of A. On the right hand side, it's A multiplied by sine of B. Yes? And then I divide everything by sine A, sine B, for example. So I would say that if these two numbers are the same, I take these two numbers and then divide them by the same number, which in this case, I will take it sine A times sine B. Okay, I divide the left-hand side by this combination. In order to keep the equality intact, I have to do the same thing with the right-hand side. So this becomes sine A, sine B as well. But then the point is that what happens when I do on the left hand side this sine A and that sine A are cancelled and I am getting B over sine B and then on the right hand side this time sine B and sine B are cancelled and I am getting A over sine A. Yes. So this is actually the proof of equality between two of these ratios. Yes. But you can similarly for example, take this one with the last one and more or less do the same kind of reasoning and then you will find the equality of this one with the last one. And then it, it means that all of them are equal. So you really don't need to do, to do that. But of course I would recommend you to do it once more yourself. Take this one to that one and more or less that, uh, do the same kind of reasoning then you will find the equality of the other two pairs. Yes, and then it means that all of them are equal. Okay, so this is also true in the case of a right angle triangle. But in the case of right angle triangle, I have seen people even use this for right angle triangles. It's not that helpful. It's not wrong. But for example, what can I see? For example, you can say that if I have a right angle triangle, uh, this is why even though this is correct to use this even in the right angle triangle but I don't recommend that because for the right angle triangle we already know the rules, yes? But if assume that you want to use this for this case, what will happen? A and then you will have C and B. So what can you write? You can write A divided by sine of A but A is 90 degrees. On the right hand side we will have B over sine of B. And on the, right, on the other hand, I have C over sine of C. But if you remember last time, we talked about sine of 90 degrees somehow. Even though I told you that sine of 90 degrees is not definable in a right angle triangle, but we use the, right, uh, the area wheel to find that one. So this becomes 1. Yes. So this becomes 1. And then I will get A is equal to B sine B. So you see, and then I get C over sine C. But these are not the rules that you are not aware of, yes, because this means what? This means sine B is equal to B over A, which you already know, yes, because sine of B is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So I mean that even if you use this rule for the right angle triangle, you don't get any new rule, you get the rules that you already know. But I would prefer myself, if the triangle is a right angle triangle, I just use, uh, use the normal rules that I have in any right angle triangle. But if my uh, triangle is not like that, then I will probably use a sign theory. Okay, so let me just give the examples, which the examples in the book are good, so let us try to solve them, yes? Uh, so one example is this. So this lesson is simple, but of course it might be hard when it comes to questions, yes? You have to practice a lot to, uh, to get good at it. So there is, a, there is a triangle whose picture is given somehow like this. Uh, it is written B, C, A, and everything is expressed in millimeters. And then you have 34 here, 41 here. 
and then you have 28 degrees here, okay? And then what I'm supposed to find, I am supposed to find the, uh, uh, the angles, all the angles of this triangle. Of course, one of them is given, I'm supposed to find the other two, and I, I think it is clear for you that I need only to find one of them, yes? Because I know that the sum of the angles should be 180. If I can only find one of them, and I add these two subtracted from 180, then I will get the other one, okay? Now, first of all, I want you to see that this problem somehow needs this theorem. That is important. How should I know that? First of all, this uh, triangle is not a right angle triangle. So it means that I cannot use the normal rules for sine or cosine for this triangle. And on the other hand, I have two sides given, one angle missing. Okay? So what should I do? Oh, yes? What is wanted in here? Pardon? What is wanted in the here? Two, the angles. Oh, oh. All the angles. So angle C, angle B is wanted, angle C is also wanted. Uh, so I think you can immediately see that how this will help you, yes? Yeah. For example, why this is good? Because you have, an, you have a side and you have the angle opposite to this side. When you have this situation, you need to think about this theorem because it might be helpful. And it is in, the, in this case, yes? Because you just write 34 divided by the sine of the angle opposite to 34, which is given to be 28 degrees, equals to, and then you have what? 41 divided by the sine of the angle of, of the opposite side, which is not given. Yes? And then, so you see that this is one equality because I have one equation and how many unknowns do I have? Exactly one unknown and that is C. So in principle, I should be able to solve. Uh, so, and how should I solve that one? I don't know, are you familiar with this? If I do, if I write this quickly like this, do you understand it or not? Is that understandable? So if I want to find sine C, uh, so if you want, you can do this two steps. Whenever you have this kind of fractions equal, this multiplied by that is equal to this multiplied by that. Yes? And then your goal is to make sine C alone, so you divide by 34. This becomes this combination divided by 34, so that's exactly what I have written here. Okay, so of course I need my calculator, but let me use the one given in the book. Okay, so for some reason they have chosen to keep two decimal points, I really don't understand why, but uh, ah, okay, at the end they have said, okay, so they calculate this using calculator, and then you remember I told you something important about sign, yes? So, uh, what I recommend you is to take, put all these, so you see is sign in the verse of whatever you see here, which is 41 over 34 sine 28 degrees. I would recommend you to put, this is the exact value, by the way, but this is, which is not very good for practical reasons because it's, I don't get a feeling how big C is. So what I recommend you to try to punch this if your calculator have, has this capability or has capacity to just put this, uh, type all of it and then press execute, yes? So what number you get? Have you done that? 34. Yeah, so this is written 34 point 48 degrees, yes? Of course, approximately. And that is good. But the whole point is that one thing you need to memorize for the time being, I told you, whenever you use sine inverse to calculate an angle, 
the one provided by the calculated is half of the story, yes? Yes. They also have considered that one as well, yes. Okay. So let us let us keep one that is let us keep the integer because you see all of them are written in integer form, so I would say that is approximately thirty-four degrees. But that is the whole point. You have to write, or this is something that you need to your, need to uh, know yourself. For the time being, you don't know the reason, but I will teach you not in this session, in the next session, why the other one is the same. What was the other one? Do you remember? What was the yes? Hundred eighty minus minus the supplement. Yes, minus thirty four degrees, and if you do that, it becomes how much? One hundred forty six degrees. So, it, by the way, don't get confused, don't think that you've got two angles. No, you have got these two numbers for the same angle C. So it means that there are two possibilities. C could be 34 degrees or 146 degrees. But of course, I don't know, <laughs> this is a little bit strange, because on the one hand they have drawn the picture for you. Of course, if they have drawn the picture for you and then it is clear that this is probably, according to this picture, that is an acute angle. But on the other hand, when I read the answer, they have actually considered both scenarios, okay? Anyway, just I want you to understand, there are two answers for C. Definitely, there will be two answers for B as well, yes? So what you can do, you can use another sign rule to do that, but I don't recommend that because we know that the sum of the internal angles should be, interior angles should be 180 degrees, yes? So I would say that, okay, let us consider one scenario. C is what? Angle C is 34 degrees. Then I would say that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is 180 degrees. And then this means that instead of angle A, I put 28 degrees. Instead of angle B, I don't know. Instead of angle C, I put 34 degrees. It is equal to 180 degrees. So then I need to find B. Yes? So what is B? Angle B is equal to... So this is 50, 62, and then 118. Yes? So that is one possibility. So you see, one answer to this problem is C, 34, B, 118. But there is another scenario, that is number 2. What happens if e, C is 146? Okay, so it is 146, then I would write the same rule. The angle A plus angle B plus angle C is supposed to be 180. 80. And then it means that this is 28 degrees, angle B is not known, but angle C is to be 146 is equal to 180 degrees. Uh, so what is left for B is 8 degrees, yes? yes? So angle B is this one plus that one, 170, no, uh, 174, 6 degrees, yes? Am I right? So 20, 160, uh, 174, yes, I think I'm right. Yes, that's correct. So there are two scenarios for this problem. And also, yes? is it possible that we have another value for A angle as well? Because if no, no, we angle to, A is given. But if beginning. we want to draw that other um, tri triangle no, with no, those... No, that is the point. That okay. is the point that the angle should be the same. So you need to think it in that way. So if you want to see it, so you cannot change A because A is already given. This is 28. Mm -hmm. This is, I don't know, 41, 34. Another scenario is uh, you have uh, this one. You have so you take the compass and put the needle here and open it and then just draw another circle for yourself here. And the other one is this one. So one angle C is this angle, one angle C is this angle without changing this. So one triangle is this triangle, another triangle is this bigger triangle. So in both cases, this angle is 28 degrees fixed, 
this is 41, this is 34, that is also 34. So I have one obtuse triangle with those properties, and I have one acute triangle with those properties. Uh, okay, so there is another question that we also mentioned this one and then we go to the cosine rule, cosine theory. Any questions here? There might be sometimes if the problem is a little bit complicated, especially after learning both of them, you might sometimes be able to use both of them but might be one of them is more efficient than the other one but anyway i don't think that's a hard one uh, so another problem that i see in the book is this one they have drawn this triangle here uh, this is a this is b this is c and everything is centimeters this is given to be six comma five this is given to be 5,2, and then this is given to be 30 degrees. And then they have asked you to calculate the area. By the way, there is no unique way to do that. Might be you have different opinions about how to do it. Uh, Okay, but my, I myself prefer to use the rules that we have just learned this year, yes? If I want to find the uh, area, I would try to use the area theorem. So the area theorem tells me that if I have an angle, and if I have this side and that side, then I can find the area very simply by multiplying these two sides and multiply it by the sine of this angle and divided by two. So the only thing which is, which is missing is this side. If I knew this side, then I didn't have any problems to calculate the area. So then it means that this motivates me to find this side. One possibility is to find this side, yes. Okay, how can I find this side? And hopefully you realize the sine rule is helpful here, yes. Because you have this angle, and you have the opposite side to that angle. You have this side. Uh, I think it's easier if you find angle B. Uh, angle, yes, but angle B, can I find angle B? No, because both of them are missing. So I have to find first angle C, yes, that's the point. Yes. So it means that, first of all, I want you to understand it was not working, yes? <coughs> Because I wanted to find this B. This is my ultimate goal. But if I want to find B, I'm missing angle B as well. Okay? So what I do, I would say, for example, let us consider this angle, which I don't know. But at least the good point is that I know the side opposite to it. Yes? So I can write the sine rule here. And what can I do? I can write uh, uh, 5.2 divided by the sine of this angle, which is not known to me yet, is equal to this side, which is 6 comma 5, divided by the angle of this side. Oh, sorry, of angle, uh, the sine of this angle. But then, of course, it becomes clear that I can use the same trick that I did before to find sine C. And then when I know C, because I already know A, I can find B, then I have to use another sign rule to find B. Yes? Uh, I don't know, is there any shorter way you can see? But I don't see any other shorter way to do it. If I want to find the area... Uh, no, I don't see, I don't know, do you have any other ideas? Okay, so let us just do that. And unfortunately, I have to calculate two times again, yes? So sine C is equal to this number multiplied by that number divided by that number. Yes, 5 comma 2 multiplied by sine of 30 degrees and then divided by 6 comma 5. 
So what you write, again, you know that the calculator only provides you with the first answer, 5,2 sine of 30 degrees, and then divided by 6,5, yes? So let me see what they have done here. Ah, okay, they also have followed us, this rule, yes? Okay, so uh, according to the book, the answer is 23.6 degrees, yes? 20 is approximately, so, but of course you don't need to put approximately all the time, 23.6 degrees, am I right? Yes, so this is one of the scenarios, of course, but you also know that there is another scenario that the calculator will not give it to you. So you need to know it yourself, yeah? So that is the 180 degrees minus 23.6 degrees. So how much is that? Uh, 100, 156.4 degrees. But in this case, one of them, fortunately, is not acceptable. Why is that? Because the sum of these three angles should be 180. If this one is 30, and this one is just 156, the sum of these two, even, is more than uh, 180. So in this case, you have to see that this is not acceptable, okay? Not acceptable. in this case okay but you have to explain of course you know why because the sum should be 180 the sum of these two only is larger than 180 but that's not possible so there's only one uh, scenario left okay so i would say that okay so there is only one angle c that i write it here okay now don't miss the point the mo the point was to find b Yes, uh, then I want to find, uh, but we, no, but you don't need to do that, B. you don't need to find B at all, so I don't know, might be, I was a little bit confused myself, so you just write B, yeah, and then because I know C, I know A, I can find B, yes, and then I can use this area rule, multiplying this by that, multiplying by the sign of the angle between them, yes, Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is to calculate B. So I would write angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. Angle A is 30 degrees. Angle B is missing. Angle C is 23, 6 degrees. Is equal to 180 degrees. And then I will find angle B, yes? So this is uh, 53, uh, 26.4. Is that right? Is it right? Yes. Okay. So thank you. This is the angle B. And now that I know the angle B, I write this area rule for these two. Okay? So I would say that the area is one half uh, the side A multiplied by the side C multiplied by the sine of the angle between these two, which is B. So this means that this becomes one half. I have the angle, I have the side A, which is 6.5, multiplied by C, which is 5.2, multiplied by the sine of this angle that we got. It is 26.4. Yes? And I don't know, if you calculate this, uh, you get 14. So it is approximately 13.4. Six square centimeters. But because because you have only two significant figures, you have to round it up to two significant figures, so it becomes fourteen. Yes. Angle B. It's 
yes, sorry. But I did the calculations from the book, so I didn't do it in my head, yes. So the answer will not be affected at the end. So B is what? 100. 100? 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. 26. Okay, uh, so you see that this is one of the things that you can do. But let us just continue the lesson again. I want to also teach you about the, uh, the cosine rule. Uh, the cosine rule is actually very natural to ask, probably more natural than the sine rule, because one question is that you already know about Pythagoras theorem. So you know that if I have this... Uh, if I have a triangle so that I know this angle is 90 degrees and this is A, this is C, this is B, if I ask you what is the relation between these sides, you can immediately tell me that A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. Then a natural question is that, what will happen if that, nine, that that angle is not 90 degrees? Is there any other relation that I can write down? And the answer to this is yes, and that is the cosine theorem. Yes? So my question is that, if this angle is 90, of course you know the answer is this, but if the, this angle is not 90, less than or bigger than 90? Let me make it clear that this is not 90. So this is A, this is B, this is C, and I have A, C, and B. Okay, so that is what I want to write, is the content of the cosine rule, the cosine theorem. So it's a little bit more complicated, but it is not hard at all. So if you want to find A squared in this case, you still can do that, even if the triangle is not a right angle triangle. But what you do, it becomes B squared plus C squared, very similar to the Pythagoras theorem, actually. But the point is that you have to subtract a term from it. So it is 2 times b times c times cosine a. So if you have a if you have a right angle triangle, you you can say that this hypotenuse squared is just simply the sum of these two squares. That's it. But if this angle is not 90 degrees, then the rule up to here is very similar to Pythagoras theorem, as you see, but this time you have to subtract minus 2bc cosine a. And let me just read it in words. So the cosine theorem actually tells you that if you are interested to find the square of a side, you can sum, you can add up the squares of the other two sides but remember, minus 2 times the, this side times that side times the cosine of the angle included by these two sides, yes? So you see, this is V, this is C, and the angle between them is A. For example, can I write something for B squared? Yes. When I am interested in B squared, there are two more sides left for me. So I would write a squared plus c squared, but minus 2ac cosine of the angle included by a and c. This is a, this is c, the angle included by a and c is b. So I would write cosine b. Can I write something for c squared? The answer is again yes. For c squared, you write the other squares added, so it becomes b squared plus c squared, oh sorry, plus c a squared minus 2 times AB times the cosine of the angle included by A and B. This is side A, this is side B. The angle included by them is the angle C. Okay, let me write this smaller so that it's clear. This is angle C, this is the length. So this is the content of the cosine theorem. 
Yes. Yeah. How do you know which one you should multiply by two, and which one should be alone? Like, how do you know it's two no, B and not two C? No, there is no difference. When you write two times three times six, it doesn't matter if you want to multiply two here and the result by three, or you multiply two by three and then the result by six. The answer is always the same. Yes. So when you write two A B, it doesn't matter actually. You can also write it as two B A. You are exactly the same. Okay. So this is the content of the theorem. First of all, I want to see why this formula is correct in the first place. Uh, okay, so let us see what we can do. First of all, let us choose one of them to, to, to prove, okay? Because the proof for all of them are completely similar. So what can I do for the proof? For example, let me uh, take the first one. So let, if you don't mind, let me draw a better picture here. So if I have this triangle, let me make it a little bit bigger. So I have A, B, C, yes. And I want to know something about A squared. I want to concentrate on the first one. Because the proof is very similar. Uh, okay. What can I do then? What is your idea? What is the starting point? Or I, I don't want you to see until the end of the proof, but if you want to start from somewhere, what is probably a very natural way to start with? Yes. Yeah, because there, there is only one tool in our hand, and that is the Pythagoras theorem itself. Yes. Yeah, so I have, but of course I cannot use Pythagoras theorem in this triangle because this is not a right angle triangle. So if I want to succeed, might be that's a good idea to draw some, some, uh, uh, right angle triangle. But to be honest, which one which is which I really don't know. But let us try because I want to say something in the first one uh, with a squared, so let us not break a to pieces. That is that's just my intuition, I don't know if this is going to work or not, okay? So, I mean that if this is angle a, I will not draw this height, because when I draw this height, I am splitting a into two parts. Uh, so I would recommend not to do that for the time being, let us uh, follow our instincts. Let me just do this one, for example. So what I say, I drop this altitude from this point to the opposite side. Okay, so that is good. At least from here to here is a steel A. And then from here to here is little c. But then that's inevitable. I have to break one of them, and I have decided to break a c. Okay? So this part, I don't know yet. This part, I don't know. But the whole expression is what is b. This we know. Okay, and then I want to write something for a squared. It is probably natural to start with this uh, right angle triangle. So I would say that a squared, in which triangle? In triangle BHC, what I have, I have a squared is equal to BH squared plus CH squared, yes? Okay, but we, we need to keep uh, have an eye on the other side. Okay, so about B H squared, what can I write? So you see B H squared is this side, and I want to get because you need you see on the left hand side I have A squared. I on the right hand side I want to get involved with B and C somehow. C squared minus A X squared. Are they? C squared minus Yes, but let me see how we can find cosine of the angle at the end. Is that a nice way? Cosine of the angle is the opposite side too. So A H two. Okay, so let us just at least write this part. So what is B H squared in this Python in this right angle triangle? C is the hypotenuse. Yes. So C squared is B H squared. Yes plus a h squared. This we know. 
in this triangle. I am interested in BH squared part, so I move this to the left. Instead of BH squared, I write C squared minus AH squared, yes? And then I have plus CH squared. Yes? So at least it is a little bit promising because what I need on the right is C squared, at least one of the things that I need, and I see it here. It's not so that bad, yeah? Uh, but another thing that I need is what? I have to get rid of AH. I have to let me see. I don't know. I should have checked this before. But anyway, so this becomes C squared. Instead of AH squared, what can I write now? Instead of H, AH, I can write the whole uh, side, which is C, which is B, minus CH. Yes? So let me just write. Instead of uh, AH, I write the whole side from here to here, which is B but minus CH squared, yes? It's also good, yes? So what I have done, instead of BH squared, I wrote C squared minus, if you want, I can put them in a pair of brackets. This expression is what I have written instead of this, and I have copied and pasted this one here. But in the next step, Instead of AH itself, I put this expression, B minus CH. Do you agree? B is from here to here. CH is from here to here. What is left is AH. So what I have done is correct. I think this will solve the problem. Yes, why this is good? Because at least I will see B squared... Uh, with a very bad sign. That's not good. Why it appears with negative sign, I don't know. So let me see. Uh, Might be this is not a good idea at all. So let me see if I write. Okay, so it might be this is not a good idea, Benjamin. Yes. No. Apparently it doesn't work. Okay, so let me just clean, and that's good to see that mathematics is like that. That's not always straightforward. Okay. So this is pro. I think this is good because I want to say something about H. But here, let me change my strategy instead of. Instead of BH, what can I write? Instead of BH, but of course there is nothing I can write about BH. Yes. But about CH, let me write this myself. So instead of BH squared, I copy and page I copy and paste BH squared first. But instead of CH, I can write B minus AH. This is better. Let me also try this. So you see, I copied and pasted this one, but instead of CH, which is from here to here, I wrote the whole B minus AH. And then because I have a power of 2, I put the power of 2 there. I think this is better now. Why? Because you know the square rule here. This gives you BH squared plus this one squared is B squared. 2 times the first one times the second one, which is very nice now, because I see this combination minus 2b times ah. Yes. And then I will see plus ah squared. Now I use what Benjamin actually mentioned, because they appeared automatically. You see ah squared and bh squared automatically appear. So I group them in one group. 
Yes, I put them next to each other. I have a b squared here. And I have minus 2b times ah. Yes? But now immediately uh, we have this formula. bh squared is this part squared plus ah squared in this right angle triangle. This is clear that this can be replaced by c squared. And then I have b squared, now this is done, yes? So you see that sometimes you get stuck, you have to change your method to succeed to solve the problem. So, so far, I was able to show that a squared is equal to that expression. But there is only one step left for me to be done. So you compare this one with what you are supposed to get. You have b squared there, you have it here, you have c squared there, you have it here, you have minus 2b, you have it here, but instead of having this combination, you have AH. So this is natural to see if AH is really equal to this one. And then it is true. Why? Can you see that? Why, why do you think that this AH is C cosine A? Why do you think this is the case? Because, again, in this colored tri triangle, if I ask you what is cosine of A, you can answer me. This is the angle, an acute angle. This is right angle triangle. So the cosine is the adjacent side, which is AH, divided by the hypotenuse, which is C. So you divide it by C. And if I ask you what AH is, you would say that AH is C times cosine A. Yes? And then this is why you can take AH and put C times cosine A, and then you are done. So this becomes B squared, if I want to write it more clearly, B squared plus C squared minus 2B multiplied by C cosine A. And that is the rule, the first rule that we have. So it is actually correct. So you see this, in this problem I was a little bit in hurry, I used that, that rule first and then I wanted to find a way out of it, it was not possible, then I changed my strategy and it worked, okay? But more or less we used everything, so here, but of course the proof is not finished because uh, I need to consider in some case that A is more than 90 degrees or B is more than 90 degrees because it matters, why? Because in this case, I have considered the case where B is an acute angle. If B is an acute angle, when I draw this, this point lies inside the triangle. But if that one is, uh, no, that one is also the same. So, okay, so what should I do then? Okay, I have to make A an obtuse angle. So if A is an obtuse angle like this, the point is that when I draw this height, the height will not go inside, will go outside, yes? So in principle, you should be able to convince yourself that the theorem will be the same even if I have this angle larger than 90, yes? And I think you will be able to do it yourself. So if this is B, if this is A, and this is C, then in that case, when I draw this altitude, it actually goes outside the triangle. And then you have to convince yourself that more or less everything that I have written here will work. Except, so let us, let us consider this one as well, okay? I'm just saying that if I prove this theorem for this picture, I am not done yet. Because you might say that what happens if this angle is larger than 90, and then I will face this scenario. You have to check if this, is, if this will change the proof or not. Let us check that one as well. And that, if this is also done, then I am finished. So, let me draw this picture here better. So, I will make this time the angle A larger than 90. Okay? And then I want to prove the same rule, but this time when I draw this height, the altitude actually, this altitude will actually go outside. 
Okay, now let us be careful. Do I need to repeat the same process again? Can I repeat exactly the same process again? I have to check. In this picture, I wrote a squared is bh squared plus ch squared. Can I write it again? Can I write it again? So this is a, this is c, this is b. Can I write this again or not? Can I write this again in this picture? You see, it's different from this picture. You have to be careful if this is also working for this case. But again, fortunately, it remains the same. Do you see that? BH squared is from here to here. CH squared is from here to here. And in this bigger triangle, I still can write this. It is not affected. Is that understandable? But something else will be affected. So let me write. The first line will be exactly the same. A squared coincidentally becomes exactly the same relation even though these are bigger or smaller, depending on which picture you are looking. The first line repeats itself exactly. But let us go to the next line. I keep BH squared intact. But do you think I can write the same relation in that picture? No. No. Is that clear? Because what is B minus AH? B is this one. AH is this one. If I subtract these two, I don't know what will happen. Yes? Because B, AH is going in that, AC is going in that direction, AH is going in that direction. But what can I write instead of CH? Look at the picture now. B plus plus this time. Instead of negative, I can write D plus AH. So you see something is really changing. It needs another proof. Yes? Because now hopefully you agree that B plus AH, look, the, look, look at here. B is from here to here. AH is from here to here. When I add them, it becomes CH. In the previous case, B minus AH is CH. But in this new picture, I am not allowed to write the same expression. I have to write B plus AH. So it might happen that this will ruin everything, that minus sign. But it turns out that no. If you are wise enough, you can find that this, the way that it will work again. But at least I want you to understand there is some differences between these two. So let us continue now. This becomes BH squared. This becomes B squared plus 2BH. 2BAH plus AH squared. Okay, still I can combine these two together, yes. So let me write B squared first, and then I combine BH squared plus AH squared, and then plus 2B times AH. Or might be I should combine them in a different way. And is it useful now? I have to find a way to get rid of the positive sign because I want to have the negative sign here, yes? Okay, this is something you haven't studied yet, unfortunately, but I will tell you. Okay, BH squared plus H, AH squared is what? BH squared is this one, plus AH squared is this one. So still you can write C squared, no difference. So still, instead of this one, in this right angle triangle, you can write C squared. So far, so good, yes? Plus 2B times AH. So there is a big difference here because in all those rules, I have a negative sign, but apparently I am in trouble. I have a positive sign here. But that is do, uh, solvable. How? Because this time, when I want to write in this triangle the cosine rule, so the cos sorry, the cosine of this angle I can write, but this angle is not that angle which is in the triangle, yes? So this angle, I call it alpha. If I ask you, can you tell me what cosine alpha is, you would say that the cosine alpha is the adjacent side, which is AH, divided by the hypotenuse, which is C. So this means that C times cosine alpha is AH, 
and then instead of this AH, I can write that, then it becomes B squared plus C squared is still plus 2B C cosine alpha, not A. Yes, because A is this angle now. But what is the relation between the angle A and angle alpha? They are supplementary. They add to 180 degrees. Okay? So this becomes equal to B squared plus C squared plus 2BC. Instead of alpha, I can write 180 degrees minus angle A. Yes? Okay, so you see there is a big difference. Not a big difference. There is some differences that we have to address it. So we have to tell what is going on. Okay, so there is an, another theorem that you will study later after I started teaching you the first part. The cosine of the supplement angle becomes negative of the cosine of the angle. We haven't studied that yet, okay? So the cosine of 180 minus an angle does not become, uh, be become the cosine of the angle. It becomes negative of cosine of the angle. For example, you can take your calculator and punch cosine of 120 degrees. You'll see that you get a negative number out of it. And then if this we know, then we can do the rest. It becomes b squared plus c squared minus 2bc and then times cosine a. But still, the good point is that you have the same formula. You don't need to be worried about if your starting angle is an acute angle or if your starting angle is an obtuse angle. Even though when you are deriving the formula, there are some differences. But if you are patient and wait until the end, the formulas will become exactly identical for this case and that case. So even though the proof is slightly different because of this uh, positive sign that we have here, rather than having a negative sign. How this positive sign was compensated at the end, there was a trigonometry theorem that we haven't studied, but we will study, that cosine of 180 minus an angle is not equal to the cosine of the angle, but it becomes the negative of the cosine of the angle. For example, if I ask you what is cosine of 60, might be you don't know. If I ask you what is cosine of 100 degree, you don't know. But there is something we know now, that these two are two opposite numbers. So for example, if you take your calculator and add them, you get exactly zero. Yes? So two angles that add up to 180 have opposite cosines. Just, there are two pieces of information that I ask you to more or less memorize at this step, but you don't need to know, you don't know the rule why this is correct. One was, what do you remember? If I told you that if two angles add to 180, we learn that sines are exactly equal. Because I told you that whenever you want to find sine inverse of an angle, one of them is calculator will give it to you, the other one you need to know yourself. And then cosine of alpha is negative cosine of beta. It doesn't hurt if you write somewhere in your notebook. The only thing that you don't know how to answer is why this is true. So if two angles add up to 180, the sines are exactly equal, the cosines are opposite. We don't know the reason, we will learn that from next session. Okay, but if you know that rule, take that rule for granted for the time being, then you realize the good news is that you don't need to care to pay attention to if this angle is obtuse or uh, acute. It will work. And even for the case of 90 degrees, it also works, but we don't need that because in the case of 90 degrees, we have Pythagoras theorem. Why this works? If this is 90 degrees, what will happen? A squared becomes B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of 90 degrees. But I told you what is cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So this is cancelled and you get the Pythagoras theorem back. Yes? So you see that uh, for the case of 90 degrees, that also works. But we don't need that because we have a better one that is the Pythagoras theorem. But let me ask you something. Can you say this is another proof for Pythagoras theorem or not? 
because I replaced 9a with 90 and we know cosine 90 is zero, so I get the Pythagoras theorem. So that, can I say that I prove Pythagoras theorem in a different way now? Yes? But you used Pythagoras exactly. theorem in and of itself. Thank so. you very much. When I was proving this theorem, I used Pythagoras theorem. So I cannot say that this is a proof for Pythagoras theorem. Because then people say, how did you know this theorem? I would say I used Pythagoras theorem. So I cannot prove Pythagoras theorem if I take it for granted, yes? So even though it apparently works, but that is not considered to be another proof for the Pythagoras theorem, because in proving this, I was using Pythagoras theorem, okay? Okay, so that is actually very good now. So we are on the safe side. Those three formulas that I wrote there, it is independent of the size of the angles involved in the triangle, yes? Uh, so you just write them in a unique way, always with negative signs, so don't get confused. Uh, the square of a side is equal to the sum of the square, uh, squares of the other two sides, minus two times these two sides, times the cosine of the angle between the sides. So that is the cosine theorem. Uh, in Pythagoras theorem, there is a little bit difference, yes? If I have in a Pythagoras theorem, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the other two, but if I want to write b squared, I have to write a squared minus c squared. The sign becomes negative. But in the cosine rule, no, the, the, the form is always the same. That's a good point, okay? Uh, okay, so let us try to solve some problems of the cosine rule, and the lesson will be actually finalized at this point, okay? Uh, so there is another picture here given to you. Okay, so what we are supposed to do is to... The good point is that, well, of course, you don't have to use the cosine rule. Sometimes might be sine rule is better, but let us try to see which one is suitable for you. So we see this picture here, okay, and that is, uh, it is written, everything is in centimeters, and then you have 50 degrees here, and then you have 6 comma 0, and then 5 comma 0. Okay, I think this is a very simple one. So determine uh, all the sides, of course. Of course, there is one more side left for us, yes, and that's the question mark. Uh, so I don't know if you don't mind, let me give them names, A, B, C, so this is B is wanted. So can I use the sign rule to prove to find B? Of course I can, but uh, I think I will be in trouble, yes, because if I want to find B, I would write B divided by sine of 50, uh, and I have to write this one by sine of that one, as uh, a so sine of this one. So I, if I want to use this, I want to understand you this, that if you want to answer this using the sine rule, might be just write it like this, is equal to, I don't know, 5 divided by sine of A. Yes? So you will be a little bit in trouble, yes, because you have two unknowns. We don't know B, we don't know A. So apparently this doesn't work, yes? But of course if you insist, you can write B over sine 50 and then write 5 over sine A. But this also doesn't work, yes? So anyway, so what is that? That's the same thing, yes? <laughs> <laughs> what can I do then? Can I write it in a different way? <laughs> apparently not. So I, I, I want you to convince yourself, because now you know that this example is the cosine rule, but in the exam, the triangle is given to you, so you yourself to have to decide which rule to use, okay? So you might try start trying this one, you see that it doesn't work. But let me give you a rule of thumb. If you have two sides and the angle between them, cosine is better, because that is implemented in the cosine rule itself, yes? Okay, so what I write here, I use one of the, those three rules. I am talking about B, I want to find B, so I would write B squared is equal to B. 
Then it becomes a squared plus c squared minus 2ac times cosine of the angle between a and c, which is b. This is the first uh, rule, uh, one of those rules. I uh, write them here. I am looking for this b squared, but I know a squared, which is 6, 0 to power 2, 5, 0 to power 2, minus 2 times 6, 0 times 5, 0, and then multiply by the cosine of the angle between them, which is given to be 50 degrees. And I recommend you to punch everything in your calculator in one go, okay? Yes? <coughs> yes, that you can use, yes. But then this is easier still, I think, yes. But of course you can, yes. But area rule is more or less the sign rule again, because the proof of the sign rule is the area rule again. Yeah. Okay, I don't know because I can see that what the answer is. Uh, so they have calculated everything. So let me also do it in two steps. This becomes 36, yes. And then I have what? 25. And then I have minus 60 times cosine of 50 degrees, which is actually a 50 61 minus 60 times cosine 50 degrees okay so you put this in your calculator and b is square root of this number whatever it is yes and if you do this calculation in the book they have given you 4 comma 74 4 comma 74 but of course we have two decimal uh, we have two significant figures so I have to keep two of them, so it, I will clean that for you. So this is in centimeters, yes. Can you open the door, thank you. Okay, they, uh, now I realize they have asked you to find all possible elements. Elements means angles and sides, every one, every one of them, okay? So we already know the sides now. So the sides are set 4.7, 6, and 5, and we have one angle. So we are supposed to find angle A, we are supposed to find angle C again. But what can I do for angle A and angle C? Now I think you can use the sine rule or you can use the cosine rule. You already have experience in using the sine rule for finding the angle. Let me now try to use the cosine rule. Can you tell me how can I use the cosine rule for answering one of those angles? Because if I find one of them, then what can I do? I can use it to, the, to find the other one. You can use, here you can use the combination of cosine rule and the sine rule. Yes, because now I am not in trouble, yes. What can I do? I can write B, which I know divided by sine of 50, I can write equals to 6, for example, divided by sine of C, then there is only one unknown here, I can solve it. Yes, so that is possible. And then when I have C, I have C, I have B, then I can find A. So using the sine rule is possible. But can I also use cosine rule for answering the second part of the question? I think you can say like uh, c squared, which is equal mm -hmm. to 36, is equal to 5 to the power of 2. Exactly. So you mean that so you start with c squared, yeah. the little c squared, is equal to what? Uh, uh, five let me write the formula first. a squared plus b squared minus 2ab, but multiplied by the cosine of the capital C, which is the angle. Here... The sides are given, angle is missing. So what you do, as you said, I put C here, which is what? 6. So 6 to power 2, 36. A to power 2 is 25. But B to power 2, I have to use my calculator or something. It's to power 2. And then I have minus 2, 20, uh, sorry, times 5, times 4.7. And then cosine C is missing. Mm 
But then what I have to do, I move this to the other side. By the way, okay. 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 4.7 is very nice numbers, 47. I move this to the left, make it positive, and then I move these two to the numbers. So I don't know, 25 plus 4 comma 7 to power 2 minus 36. Let me also write this. Okay, then I am looking for cosine c. If you can use this, you, can you calculate this for me? Uh, this 25 plus 4.7 to power 2 minus 36. By the way, be careful. When you want to find cosine, there is no mystery. Just write cosine inverse and just trust your calculator. There is no hidden number, okay? Because for the sine case, we have two numbers. One number is given by your calculator. The other number, you need to subtract it yourself from 180. But for cosine, no. That's only this number. And then I don't know. If you calculate this number, what will happen? I think it's 76. Yeah, it is written to be, no, they have written a 54, I think, because they have calculated B. Ah, okay, so, okay, now you are right, because the naming of I have done here is different from the naming in the book, so you are right. It becomes, what, 76 degrees. So C becomes 76 degrees. Let me ask you one question. If I wanted to solve the same problem using the sine rule, you know that for the sine rule there are two numbers coming out, yes? Because I told you that you calculate this and then take the sine inverse. One number is provided by the calculator, there is another number. So why, is it, why this is possible that I get one answer here, two answers from there, so which one is correct? If you don't mind, let us just do that one as well to compare them. If you do everything consistently, the answers shouldn't be different. Here, there is only one answer you get for, for C. But let us assume that you don't do this. After this stage, you decide to use the sine rule. Are you in trouble or not? Let us check. Mm. So 4.7 divided by sine of 50 degrees is equal to 6 over sine C, yes? And then this means that sine C is equal to 6 times sine of 50 degrees divided by 4 comma 7. And then I have to write C is sine inverse of that number 6 times sine 50 degrees over 4 comma 7. But I told you that if you put this in the calculator, one answer is the one that calculator gives you. The other answer you have to write yourself. Can you do this one now? Because if there are two answers, I am in trouble. Because in one scenario, I get one answer, and the other scenario, I get two answers. What is the number? Can you read it for me? It's 77.93. Uh, 77? 77. Yes. 493. Yes? Uh, are we in trouble now? So that is another point. Yeah, I think this number and that number should be the same, aren't they? Uh, that's why... That is why I don't know. This is very good. Don't do these things, yes? It is better to be able to punch everything and then do the calculation. It might be because you know that, by the way, because we are making an error here, and then we are taking this error with us in another calculation, so we are accumulating the errors, okay? So, I don't know which one is closer, by the way, we can also see, but... There is another problem. That is my main problem. So this, what I get is 78, if that's correct, yes? More or less. And then I told you that this is not the only scenario. You have to find another one. But if that one is the case, I am really in trouble. Because this will give me two angles, but the other method gives me only one angle. Yes? So let me just do that one as well. But then, 
For the other angle, I have to write 180 degrees minus this angle, yes, which is how much? 102 degrees. Uh, but is that acceptable? So let me see. Uh, because this seems to be also acceptable, yes? yes. 102 degrees and 550 degrees oh. is what? 152. 152. So there are 28 degrees left. <laughs> yes, so it means that we can have two answers. But that is a really big problem. Uh, let us see how this will go. Actually, the other method of, uh, also get us two answers. Yes. So the angle would be bigger than two hundred twenty. Mm. No, let me see. No, but the cosine. Uh, when I get the cosine, I get exactly one answer. Yes. There is no other answer for cosine. The other one is much larger than that one, which is in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, this is clearly not acceptable. So I get a unique answer from this method. I was thinking that might be one of these answers is not acceptable, but apparently it is, yes? Yes. Uh, okay, now we are in real trouble, okay? This is, this is very good to solve the problems from different angles. So what I get in the book, the answer is 76 degrees. Uh, as we have done. Uh, may you calculate this one exactly again? No, there is no other way. But we have to understand why this cannot happen. So let us understand this, because it is not that easy to understand this is not happening. 78 degrees is good. Okay. It is harder to understand why this is not acceptable, but it is not acceptable. How? Do you see that? Uh, so this is not always the case that you can immediately see that this is not acceptable. But let us see if this C is more than... The, more than... Is it because of the length of the side? Okay, now let me let me ask you something. Yeah. Can you multiply six by cosine of fifty to tell me see what the answer is? Three point eight five. Yeah, so that's the reason. Because uh, if this angle if but this is very good by the way we did it because I couldn't predict it myself. Because now if that angle is one hundred two, what is happening? This, ang this should be somewhere here, for example. It should be bigger than 90. But this is given to be fixed 6 degrees, okay? But when you multiply it by cosine of 5 degrees, it becomes larger than 5. But I asked Yajol, she answered it is less than 5. So it means that if this is going to be the case, then the third side, this, so you see, when, when I have this, when I ask you to multiply 6 by cosine of 50 degrees, if this is an acute angle, I expect to get something smaller than this side. Yes? And when I ask you to calculate, you told me 6 times cosine of 50 is 3 point something, which is less than 5. So it means that this point should be somewhere above this side. Okay, but if this angle is supposed to be a, 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 an obtuse angle, this will be will go out. Yes, something like this. When I just do the same thing, I will get something bigger than five. Yes, but it was not trivial, and it was very very good that we did it in both ways, because it would be really in trouble. Okay, I mean, this is not a big trouble if you go back and calculate things without. Uh, doing approximations in the middle of the way, do everything algebraically and take it with you until the very last step that you put in the calculator. I don't expect any discrepancies. We can also check that. 
that was not that was a minor problem that can be solved. Uh, but this was a, was a major problem. If one scenario gives you two answers, one scenario gives you one answer, it means that mathematics will collapse. Yes. <laughs> then you don't need to do the national exam. Yes. Yes. Yeah, if you put in the exact value for the it matches it's 76. Yeah, I told you. So that is expectable. So that is, by the way, good to remember that this is not good to do the approximations at each step. Because you, you are making an error in each calculation and you are accumulating all the errors with you. It's better that do everything algebraically until the very end and then put that formula in the same package and put it there. Then you will get exactly the same answers. But this one was an extremely serious problem that I myself couldn't predict. This happened. My prediction was that I will get an angle which is not acceptable immediately by looking at it. But 102 degrees is apparently acceptable. But because it doesn't match with the other data, it is not acceptable. <clears throat> and then understanding if it doesn't match with the other data is a little bit tricky here. As as it, this means that we have to always check that. Not only, of course, if that becomes an angle, which is if it, uh, clearly not acceptable, you just throw it away. But even if that angle looks like to be acceptable, you have to check this test again, which is, which is actually a little bit dangerous, yes? Because it means that you have to always check that one as well. Because in that case, to be honest, if I wanted to solve this problem using this method, not this method, I might be at this end. I would say that there are two answers without being careful. That's very good that we solve it in both ways because we learn new mathematics, yes? Okay, any questions? Do you understand why the second answer is not acceptable? Be I just told you that because this is fixed. I cannot play around with this data. 6, 50, and 5 are fixed. And if I ask you, can you tell me the projection, the length of the projection of this side on this side, you will say yes. I will draw this one and I multiply this by the cosine, it gives me the projection. The projection by calculation is a smaller than 50. So this means that this point should be exactly above this length, above this side. It cannot be outside. Yes? If it is outside, the length of the projection becomes longer than the side itself. Is that understandable? So this means that in a, in a, in a very indirect way, we realize that this angle has to be an acute angle, not an obtuse angle. So it was actually a tricky problem. Yes. Any questions? Okay. So this is this lesson is finished. I will go back and cover the first part. But then, I, as I told you, section five point two is uh, omitted from this lesson, which is uh, the, an equation for circles. So that's good. And I am trying to negotiate with Sima to take over uh, Wednesday. So we it might be if she accepts that we will have two math lessons on Wednesday, one in the morning instead of technique and one at the evening. Okay. So that we can more or less go. So we have one more week. I want to finalize the lesson on Monday, um, week twenty. We can practice for the national exam. And Tuesday you have the national exam. Exactly. Yes, but I think we will finish it. <laughs>